Henrietta Swan Leavitt was a U.S. astronomer famous for her contribution in solving what is known in astronomy as the problem of distances. Tomorrow, the 12th of December 2021, marks the 100-year anniversary of her death. In honor of her work, let us show you how her discovery exactly revolutionized astronomy. Have you ever gone out at night, looked at the starry sky and wondered, how far away are these stars? Is this one star closer or farther away than the brighter star next to it? Well, this question is not easy to answer. That's because the stars that you see in this image have what we call a different apparent brightness, and that means they look different to our eyes. So if two stars look different to us, does that mean that they are really different from each other, or are they just placed at different distances from us? For example, let us imagine that we see two stars that, to our eyes, look identical, they look exactly the same. This can be because of two reasons. Number one, the stars are actually identical, they have what we call the same real or intrinsic brightness, and they are truly placed at the same distance from us. Or, number two, one of the stars is actually much brighter than the other, but it is placed much farther away. When a star is very far from us, only a tiny fraction of its light reaches us, which makes it look dimmer in comparison to other stars. To our eyes, the two scenarios look exactly the same, so without any additional information, we just cannot tell them apart. You might have heard astronomers mention the distance to some stars. For example, Proxima Centauri, the closest star to us, is located at 4.2 light years away. This means it takes the light of Proxima Centauri 4.2 years to reach us. But if we cannot trust how stars look, how bright they are to tell their distance from us, how do we actually know? Well, we can because we use a method known as parallax. Parallax is the measurement of the apparent movement of an object with respect to its background when you, the observer, is the one who is actually moving. But what does that mean? Well, let us demonstrate with an example. Just extend your arm in front of you and put your thumb up. Look at it while closing your left eye and notice its position with respect to the objects in the background. Now do the same, but with your right eye closed instead. Can you see how your thumb has moved? Well, your thumb has not actually moved, and neither have the objects in the background. This is just an effect caused by the different angles between your left and right eye and your thumb. And this is what we call parallax. Now repeat the experiment, but with your thumb closer to your eyes. Can you see how this effect is exaggerated? The apparent movement of an object is larger when the object is closer to us. So this means that the apparent movement of objects is related to their distance from us. We can use this to calculate distances to objects, and we can apply the same method to the stars. When we look at the star that is close to us in the summer, we see a certain pattern of stars behind it, and then the Earth moves on its orbit around the Sun, and in the winter it's in a different position. When we look at the same star, we see a different pattern of stars behind it, and we can use this to calculate its distance from us. For example, look at the stars in this GIF. Do you see how they are moving as we move around the Sun? And do you see how that star is moving a lot less than that other one? That means it's much farther away from us. And this is how we calculate the distance to the stars. But do you also see how some of these stars are not moving at all? This is because they are too far away from us for our orbit around the Sun to let us see any apparent movement. This is in part good because if all the stars were moving around, we would lose our frame of reference and we wouldn't be able to calculate the distance to any star. However, it also poses a problem because what if we wanted to calculate the distance to these very far away stars? Parallax cannot be used to calculate the distance to very far away objects in the sky, and in fact, it cannot be used to calculate the distance to anything that is outside of our own galaxy. 
All right, so we're back to square one because we managed to measure the distance to some stars, but we never managed to measure the distance to some other stars. And why is that a problem? Well, because if we cannot measure the distance to the objects that are farther away from us, we cannot know how big things are. For example, if we cannot measure the distance to the last star in our galaxy, we just cannot know how big our galaxy is. And if we cannot measure the distance to other galaxies, we cannot even be sure that they are indeed other galaxies. In fact, nobody knew if the nebulous objects observed with telescopes were other galaxies or if instead they were just nebulous objects inside of our own galaxy. Some people argued that the Milky Way was the entirety of our universe and that nebulous objects were just clouds of gas and dust within it while other people thought that spiral nebulae were actually other galaxies located at incredible distances from us. The problem of distances inspired the famous Great Debate in 1920, and in fact it would not be solved until Edwin Hubble measured and published in 1925 the distance to another galaxy. And here's where Henrietta Swan Leavitt comes into place. Henrietta was one of the many women computers employed by Harvard College Observatory to catalog stars captured in photographic plates. In particular, Henrietta was in charge of tracing the brightness changes of a sample of CFIT stars. CFITs are a very special type of star that changes its brightness with time in a periodic way. And Henrietta was cataloging a sample all located in the Magellanic Cloud. This is important because since all the stars were in the same place, they were all at the same distance from us. While Henrietta was doing her job, she noticed that brighter stars in her sample had a longer period. What does this mean? This means that it took those stars a longer time to iterate from bright to dim to bright again, while fainter stars took a much shorter time to do the same. And since all the stars were at the same distance, this had to mean that the trend she noticed depended on the intrinsic or real brightness of these stars. Henrietta herself pointed out that someone only needed to calculate the parallax to all of these nearby CFITs to know their real intrinsic brightness. And once this is done, one can establish a relation between the star's intrinsic brightness and the duration of its period. Once this relation is very firmly established, it can be used to calculate the distance to stars for which a parallax measurement is impossible. And how exactly? Well, regardless of their intrinsic or real brightness, one can use the changes in apparent brightness to measure a period. And once the period is known, we will know the intrinsic brightness of the star. And then one only needs to use the difference between apparent and real brightness to derive its distance from us. So Henrietta found a way to calculate the distance to the faraway stars. Sadly, Levitt's discovery remained unnoticed for over a decade and well until after her death. It was Edwin Hubble in 1925 who discovered a CFIT star in Andromeda and used Henrietta's method to calculate its distance from us. And surprise, surprise, it was 50 times farther away than the radius of our own galaxy. So this had to mean that Andromeda was its own entity instead of just a cloud of gas and dust and stars within our own galaxy. It was another galaxy. And thus, we settled the great debate forever. This ability to measure the distance to other galaxies would eventually force astronomers to stop assuming that the Milky Way is at the center of the universe, and it paved the way to measuring and understanding the scale and structure of the universe, enabling us to firmly establish that the universe is currently expanding. Stay tuned for future history videos on topics such as the Great Debate, the Harvard Computers, or the discovery of the expansion of the universe. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.